Hey everybody, this is GGB Coast Puppers Day. We're going to be talking about the Jets-Packers game. Let's get into this thing. I actually thought this was a really good game, considering that, like, you know, the, the competition at uh, QB was not the best outside of Zach Wilson, but I, I actually had a couple takeaways for this game, and I would like to share them with you. Number one winner of the game, obviously, Zach Wilson. I just got to go with him off the bat. He looked really good. He did. He, had, he, he went 9-11, 128 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. He didn't get sacked. He, he had a quarterback rating of 154.7. He was about all you could hope for if you were the New York Jets. And honestly, so far, Zach Wilson, in my opinion, has been the most impressive of the rookie quarterbacks. Trevor Lawrence has not shined. Justin Field had a bad game against the Buffalo Bills, which I'll get to that later. Uh, where the key? Trey Lance has, I mean, he's shown flashes, but again, not overall as good as Zach Wilson has. Mac Jones has been pretty solid, but again, not as explosive as Zach Wilson has been. And uh, uh, that's that's the four that we're drafting in the first round. And then obviously, others haven't done as much, but Zach Wilson has looked really good so far, and he's so far been a star in my eyes and he's looking extremely solid and then you got kurt banker kurt banker i also have as a winner because kurt banker uh he's he's been on the practice squad of the falcons for the past several years now he's uh gonna be the second it's going into probably his like third season in the nfl and uh he, he's moved on to the green bay packers now the packers i find it unlikely they keep three qbs on their roster but He's definitely earned himself a spot on the practice squad. He looked good. He went 18 to 25, 151 yards, averaged six yards per throw, and uh, he threw a touchdown. He also threw a pick. Now the touch, the the pick was um, not great. Uh, it was one it was one of the few plays that I think he wished he could have had back. <laughs> but he looked overall really solid today. I'm very impressed with how Kurt Bankert looked, in my opinion. Uh, let's go to the running game. There's a couple winners here. Obviously, Michael Carter won this game for the Jets. Uh, Michael Carter is a player. Uh, for the Jets, he's trying to win that running back one role. And right now, technically speaking, on the depth chart, he's listed as third behind Tevin Coleman and Ty Johnson. But I think every reasonable person that's been following the Jets knows the real battle is between Tevin Coleman and Michael Carter. Michael Carter obviously being the third-round rookie. Fourth round rookie, I'm sorry, out of UNC. You also, <coughs> you also have uh, Tevin Coleman, who's been in the league for a long time. He's was a 2015 third round pick at, from it uh, for the Falcons. He was with the Niners when they were almost at the Super Bowl. Uh, he's been a good running back throughout his career. I'm interested to see if he, the, who the Jets are good at number one option is going to be. I feel like they're going to do a good tandem though. But Michael Carden definitely. Did himself a favor into trying winning the number one role when he had 10 carries today for 52 yards, averaging 5.2 yards per carry. My opinion, win of the game, rushing the ball. I have two winners of the game uh, for the Green Bay running backs. Uh, first winner I have is Kylan Hill. Kylan Hill uh, had seven carries for 29 yards and a touchdown. That's not the best, like, average per carry. He only averaged 4.1 yards per carry, and A.J. Dillon and Patrick Taylor both averaged more per carry than him. Uh, but... If we're going to talk about a guy that she shows a unique set of skills that the Packers could definitely use moving forward, uh, Kylan Hill has that. Uh, we all know Aaron Jones is the the, the do-it-all back for the Green Bay Packers. He's yet to play in the preseason. That makes sense. Uh, A.J. Dillon is going to be the number two back, in my opinion. But A.J. Dillon is very much a, 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 he's a north-south runner. And... North-South runners are fine. They're actually, some of them are really good. I, I describe Derrick Henry as a North-South runner. I'd like I, I'd like to have an East-West runner. And that's kind of what the guy Kylan Hill is. Kylan Hill is a very fast receiver. Uh, not to mention his ability in the passing game. In this game, he ended up getting two catches for 11 yards. Uh, that's not amazingly impressive, but you go back and watch the game. Kylan Hill looks like a very explosive running back, and I think he'll, he's carved himself a role into this offense. Now, Patrick Taylor, on the other hand. Patrick Taylor was a guy I hadn't heard a lot about. And considering I'm a Memphis fan, I I was like, ow, 
That hurts. I, I thought I was a Memphis fan. I never even heard of this guy before. But Patrick Taylor, first season in the NFL. He's 23, wasn't drafted. But he actually showed himself in this game. He ended up having eight carries for 48 yards, averaged six, point, six yards per carry, second best of the day only behind A.J. Dillon, who looked really good. But I think we all know he's going to be really good, so I don't really count that as a win uh, for A.J. Dillon. I think A.J. Dillon, most people understand that he's going to be the number two back, so he's not fighting for a roster spot, which Patrick Taylor is. He's trying to fight with a guy named Dexter Williams, and Dexter Williams, he didn't have a good day. And that's not something you could afford. He ended up only averaging 2.8 yards per carry, eight carries for 22 yards. Only uh, two players had worse than that on the Green Bay Packers, and that was Kurt Bankert, the quarterback, and Amari Rogers, the wide receiver. So all of the other three running backs had a better day than Dexter Williams. I'll get to that later, but in my opinion, Patrick Taylor has lost a win into getting that number four running back spot if they keep it. And that's where he's listed right now on the Green Bay Packers depth chart, although that could change. So he's definitely notched a win there. Uh, I'm going to go with a winner on uh, the New York... Jets receiving side of things. Uh, straight off the bat, Corey Davis won this game. He showed why he was a huge free agent pickup. He ended up having four catches for 70 yards. No touchdown, but he had, tw he had a long of 27, averaged 17.5 yards per catch. And he looked like the number one receiver. Now I understand you look at the receiving, uh, you look at the depth chart for the New York Jets. You got Jameson Crowder, Elijah Moore, Denzel Mims. There are the three people that I expect to actually give Corey Davis a run for his money for that number one role, and none of them played this game. Keelan Cole's the only one of the five. Only three of the six top receivers play in this game, and that was Keelan Cole and Braxton Berrios, and uh, I think Braxton Berrios is a verge player, and Keelan Cole, uh, actually beating out Keelan Cole is somewhat impressive, but still... Uh, Corey Davis looked like the winner in this game. He looked like a player you can rely on if you're the New York Jets and a very good target for Zach Wilson. Now, another one I'm going to have is Tyler Croft. Now, Tyler Croft, uh, he's a player that's bounced about the league quite a bit. Uh, I don't know if I didn't know if he was ever going to find his role. He, I think he's found his role, in my opinion, uh, with the New York Jets. This is his third NFL team. It was a third-round pick out of Rutgers in 2015. He's bounced from the Bengals last year. In the last two years, he's with the Buffalo Bills as the number two kind of option. And now he has finally found his place with the New York Jets. He ended up having only two catches, two catches for 36 yards and two touchdowns. Very, very productive. He was officially named, I think, the number one tight end a couple days ago, which is very impressive considering that Tyler Croft was a free agent that they signed and not to a huge contract, I'd like to point out. Chris Herndon is a guy they drafted in the fourth round in 2018, uh, thinking he'd be their next great tight end. <coughs> to beat him out is pretty impressive by Tyler Croft. He was a big winner of this game, in my opinion. And then you move on to the, the, the Packers side of things. In my opinion, a huge winner for the Packers is uh, Malik Taylor. Malik Taylor is in his second season out of Ferris State. He was undrafted. Uh, uh, normally, those guys don't get a huge chance. I think he's on the verge of making this roster right here. Now, if you look at it, uh, Devontae Adams is obviously the number one receiver everyone in the world knows now that. And then you got Marquez Valdez, Scantling, Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, and Amari Rogers, who they drafted pretty highly this year. So I doubt that Amari Rogers does not make this roster simply because they want to keep him for the future. Now, on the other side of things, you have that sixth spot available. Teams typically keep five to six receivers, and if you want to be that sixth receiver, you got to make a big-time play. Now, it's interesting because Equinemius St. Brown was a sixth-round pick by the Packers. So the fact is that he's not making this roster at the present moment pretty interesting. But Malik Taylor, on the other hand, ended up having a great day. Four catches for 66 yards, so... Pretty good in that regard, in my opinion. Great, great game by uh, Malik Taylor. In my opinion, trying to make that roster. He did a great job today. Uh, one more winner. On the kick return side of things, Corey Ballantyne. Uh, he was a draft pick by the Giants, a pretty uh, sixth rounder in 2019. He's gone on IR since here. Uh, but I had him as a winner just simply because of the kick return he had was amazing. One kick return for 73 yards. It was a pretty amazing kick return, but I got to put him out a winner for that game, even though he 
He's on the IR now. That sucks for him. Uh, losers in this game. Uh, I'm going to go with Mike White because I don't know the extent of Mike White's injury. Uh, I'm hoping it's not serious. He suffered a rib injury, but he by far looked like the second best QB on that field for the Jets. He went 7-9 for 39 yards. He was somewhat accurate. James Morgan, on the other hand, came in and did not look good at all. So, loser is Mike White, and then another loser is James Morgan. Like, James Morgan was given the prime opportunity to succeed and get that number two spot once Mike White got hurt. He did not, and now you're hoping if the Jets that Mike White is ended up becoming healthy again so he can be your backup QB. Um, uh, loser, I got to put Dexter Williams. Dexter Williams had an average of 2.8 yards per carry. Not good. Only a running back behind him was Michael P. Ryan for the other team. And uh, he actually doesn't have that much threat for the number four spot. So I don't consider him as much of a loser. I feel like the Jets might end up keeping four running backs. So I don't feel like he's a huge loser tonight. Dexter Williams is a huge loser. And you're trying to keep your spot. This is not a way to do it, guys. So Dexter Williams not did not have a good game. Uh, other losers. Um, uh, no, 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 I don't know. Uh, other than that, I don't see any real losers. Braden Mann and J.K. Scott both look fine kicking, uh, punting the ball. Matt Amendola was perfect on the day. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Other than that, I don't see anyone else that's a loser, guys. So, but hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is GGB Coast Pepper saying adios, amigos.